Hello everyone, it's Warren here from Over Exposed 360. So I haven't been updating channel for a few weeks, it's been a busy few weeks with a lot of um, photo shoots and video video shoots and uh, a lot of editing and a lot of testing um, a lot of playing with new techniques and new ways to shoot in 360 so hopefully I can uh, make a few videos around the uh, advanced editing techniques with, photo with photos, 360 photos and videos soon. As you can see here I've got a PS3 R unit and T as well so we've been doing a lot of testing and a lot of playing um, the unboxing video should be up now I hope when this video is up if not um, hopefully in the, a day or two after you see this video um, and we are having a lot of fun with the PSVR um, as some of you might know I was very happy with the GVR um, and the Sony PSVR is just amazing so I won't go into that right now there will be other videos on that but hopefully you'll watch those as well and, um, and see what you think so the main point of this video is talk about the new firmware update that Samsung have rolled out um, a week ago now, so on the 4th of October. It was quite an actual quiet um, release, I actually didn't know about it. I'm sure some of you guys have already been updated the new firmware, so this might be nothing new for you. So, But I'll, I'll run through some of the features and what has what changed in the new updates. Um, but it's actually been um, for the better, um, from what I've seen. There's a, a few new features and functions in there, in the app, um, which I am really happy about. Um, there's also still things that are missing which I always wanted in there but hopefully they'll come and there's one main thing that it shows that Samsung have been listening to us hopefully um, about the front camera and the back camera there's actually a default view within the app now to show which direction to use as your um, center of the 360 uh, uh, video or photo so here it is this is the new Samsung G360 manager application and it's up to version 1.0.10 and the new firmware is C200GLU0API1 so just like previous firmware update the update is triggered by the phone that is connected to the G360 and then it will download to your phone and then it will install onto the G360 so one thing you should make sure to do after you've done the firmware update is go back and update your uh, any settings that you have. So the uh, timer off settings, the sound settings, the LED settings, um, and most importantly the video uh, recording settings. Um, my one brought it back down to the 2K recording, so make sure you switch it back to 4K if that's what you prefer. Another thing I've noticed with this update is that um, you should make sure to update both the app as well as the firmware at the same time because there are functions that uh, will no longer work properly if they're not in sync and also um, a lot of the features that are, are new with these updates um, work hand in hand with both the firmware and the app and I'll show you this um, as we go through the new changes that are put through with this update. So the first major enhancement of this upgrade is a lock screen controller feature which is now added onto uh, your phone. So what this basically allows you to do is to start or stop your video or your photo or your time lapse um, while your phone is still in the lock screen so you don't have to wait for uh, G360 Manager app to get back into live view and you can basically almost use this like a remote control um, while your camera is already set in location so you can start a, take a photo or start a video as you go while your phone is still in the lock screen. This is really handy as you don't have to wait for the live view to load up again and it uh, allows you to access the recording features a lot quicker while uh, you've got your phone with you and also it probably help with battery management as well and help uh, your phone last a bit longer as well. As you can see on the screen that um, the settings is actually changing for different functions and that setting is updating because I'm actually changing those functions on the camera itself. So I'm changing from video to photo to time steps etc and that reflects straight away onto the phone. Um, I only wish that you could actually make those changes on the phone itself rather than on the camera. So it actually makes it easier for you to be away from the camera and still change from a photo to a video and record without going to the live view functions in the uh, Samsung G360 manager app. A second enhancement of this new update is the ability for the user to decide whether the front lens or the rear lens is the center of the 360 video. This was something that I definitely was confused initially myself where the rear camera was actually the center of the 360 image rather than front camera as defined by which one's the front and the rear camera. It's actually not that big a deal once you get used to it and you can always edit this in post but it's good to see that Samsung must have been listening to us and everyone who's probably have been confused with it and have emailed them about the issue 
for them to uh, put in feature to allow the user to decide uh, whether the rear or the front camera is used as the center of the 360 image. The next enhancement of this new update is quite a big one for me, is the introduction of two new views when viewing 360 photos. When viewing 360 photos on your phone, previously you only had the dual view, the panoramic view, and the 360 view. Samsung have now added two new views, which is the round view, or the mini planet type view, and the stretch view. So the round view, or the mini planet type view, is one that you've probably seen on the internet quite a fair bit, uh, where your 360 photos is almost transform into a sphere or like earth and you've got the objects um, sitting on top of the sphere in an exaggerated and, and expansive elongated way. Um, it's really fun to play with, it looks really cool, um, you can make short videos, not really within this app, there are other apps that you can use, um, the Rico Theatre apps are pretty good for those things, but at least you can see the effects that you can get from it, and you can play with it, and you can uh, obviously screenshot it out, or do uh, recording it on your phone directly. The view that I'd be more interested in checking out was the stretch view, which basically stretches out the 360 image on the edges. So what that means is that you don't have to zoom into your 360 image to get the right angular view of the image itself in 360 view. What I have found is that even though I find the 360 videos and photos amazing to look at within the VR goggles, um, it's just kind of lack a little bit of that wow factor when viewing on a smartphone. And I think this stretch view kind of gives it that little wow back. So what it actually does is it gives it a lot more room in the photo. It, it makes you feel a lot smaller in that environment. Whereas normally when you look in the normal 360 view on the phone, you have to zoom in to make sure the angles are right. And you end up being too close to the environment and all the proportions just seems wrong when looking through the phone. So this stretch will kind of keep that proportions back. So you kind of can appreciate the scale and size of things. When you pull back a little bit in the environment, there's more room for you to look around. And you and also all the lines seems a lot straighter in here as well. So when, when that stretch view is um, fixing the angles uh, when it's stretched back. Uh, when you look around the image, everything's the straight lines in there. Even though you can, you notice that it is definitely stretched. There's things that shouldn't be um, as stretched as it is. But it's almost like taking a photo in a small room with wide angle. Everything seems a lot bigger, a lot grander, and it gives that effect of room, roominess that um, that I get when I look at my photos in a VR headset. So the stress field definitely doesn't work for every single photo, um, 360 photo that you've taken. Uh, I, I think that it works better for indoor shots, uh, where things are a little bit closer to you and you feel a bit cramped and um, stuffy inside. Um, for outside shots, some of them will still work, so, but some of the lines seems a bit off because you get the horizons a bit stretched, you get um, things at an odd angle when you've got a big wide open space to look at. But um, it, it works sometimes, so you, it's good that Samsung is giving us more options. Having the um, tiny planet view, the, the round view, which everybody loves on the internet and look around and it's great fun to play with, and this stretch view um, makes it so much more fun for showing photos to people um, online on your, on your phone after you've taken it. Um, and it helps people appreciate the, the 360 image that you've taken on a mobile device on a flat screen rather than a VR goggle as I prefer to see them but it's not very often that you get get that out to uh, to look at all your photos. So these are the major features enhancements with the uh, latest October 2016 firmware and app update. It does claim to have some performance enhancement as well as some battery improvements as well. Um, I think I've noticed some um, enhancement with the speed of getting to the live view but I, I may have to just see a bit longer and see whether it's, I'm imagining it or whether it's actually true. I haven't actually done the time compare, uh, but it feels like it's a little bit snappier. And as mentioned before, I think some of the improvement with the battery may be due to um, the introduction of lock screen controller feature, which is uh, one of the enhancement of this upgrade. Um, so that's about it. So, so overall, I, I think this has been a pretty good change and improvement with the firmware and the Samsung Key 360 Manager app. I haven't had any downside yet. I had a few crashes on it, um, but I had crashes on it before. I don't think it's um, made it any worse, but 
we'll see as we use it a bit more so overall it seems to be okay um as i said earlier before make sure you do go and update all your settings again because we're, with this update it does reset all your update to the factory default so all your photo settings um if you set it to maximum before and all the video settings and time lapse settings that you may have go back in and just check through each one to make sure you've got the right settings that you want to have before you uh, do your next shoot I know that there are still many more features that I do want on my Samsung Key 360, but it's a good sign that Samsung is actually putting new features onto the uh, app and the firmware of the camera to give us new features on uh, while we're using it. And it also seems like they are listening to the community with uh, the introduction of the rear and front camera default view. So hopefully this will be something that they'll continue and will monitor and hopefully give us some of the things that uh, our community asked them for and wished for. And I, I'm still hoping, obviously, for uh, Samsung to have a response and uh, a way to fix the overheating problem with the overheating and the, uh, and the focus. Um, but who knows, uh, that may be something that's uh, not fixable within the firmware um, or the app so but let's hope that it is and that could be something that um, would solve a lot of issues that a lot of our users are facing so there are the changes for the new firmware and the new update on the samsung key 360 manager app um, i definitely think that is uh, an improvement to what we had um, some of the speed seems to be a little bit quicker but maybe i'm, I'm thinking that um, some of the new features and functions within the app are pretty cool and it also shows that Samsung are continuing updating and improving their app and the camera for us. So in the next few videos we're going to have some um, PSVR videos but I'm also going to roll out some uh, tech advanced techniques videos for using the Gear 360 for photos and for videos and also I might show some Photoshop editing uh, videos that I uh, the way that I edit my 360 videos, the process I go through, and also some of the, um, they're probably not basic tips, because in general, a, a basic user probably wouldn't do what I, I, I would like to do with my photos, so they're probably more the advanced editing uh, techniques that I use, um, which, which it's probably good to know. Um, you may want, you may not want to do this for every single photo or every single video, because it's, it is a little bit, uh, takes a little bit longer but for photos that you really love and you you're taking it for uh, to show people um, some of these tips and techniques might be helpful for you to making the best of that photo um, well making a great photo even better hopefully so hopefully I'll get those videos up to you soon and thank you for watching again thank you for all your feedback and all your comments and all your encouragement of the channel hopefully you um, continue watching and continue your subscription to us so this is Warren from Overexposed360 and I'll catch you in the next video.